So to begin with, you need to ensure that you have a good positive control cell line that you know expresses the protein. And the way to do this is you can either do a literature search or you can take a look on the manufacturer's data sheet to see if they've used the antibody in, a, in another cell line that's, that's been successful. When you're actually culturing the cells, there's several things you need to take into consideration. You need to ensure that you're using the correct culture media. And this information you can find again on the manufacturer's instructions or the supplier's instructions. They'll be able to tell you which is the correct culture media to use. You may also find that the cells require some sort of stimulant, mitogen, or some sort of other agent to induce the expression of the protein that you're interested in. Or perhaps you may want to study the inhibition of your protein by some agents. So you need to consider what concentration do you need to use this agent at, or you may need to try a range. Again, you could start by a literature search to find out if there's any information to start with. In preparing the cells, you can grow your cells on sterile cover slips in a 6 well culture dish, or there are chamber slides available, which make staining of the cells on the slide very easy afterwards. The alternative to this is for suspension cells, where you would need to culture them as normal, and then you can cytospin spin the cells onto some slides. You culture the cells to the desired density. Usually, this is about 70 to 80% confluent, and this usually takes about 24 to 48 hours. You would then wash the cells carefully two or three times with PBS. You can then fix the cells and go on to your antibody staining. When do you know when your cells are ready to stain? So this depends on several factors. So although we say that the cells should be about 70 to 80% confluent, this does very much depend on the target. Some cells need to be really very confluent before they start expressing the protein you're looking for in the correct localization. So you may find that this needs to be optimized. If your cells are under confluent, they may not have expressed enough protein yet. Uh, for example, some membrane proteins, um, particularly cell junction proteins, they may not be expressed in correct localization because they're under confluent. You may have to wait until they're really quite confluent before you can see them. If the cells are over confluent, you may have some dead and dying cells in the culture. And this could affect your, your staining results. Um, also, proteins can degrade and change localization in dying cells if they're necrotic or apoptotic. And you take this into consideration. So, as I was mentioning, you may need to grow your cells on a matrix, for example, on collagen 1, to induce the expression of the protein you're looking for in the correct localization and we would suggest to check the literature to make sure that this is or isn't required. Moving on, we're going to take a further look here at inducing or inhibiting your protein expression. So if you want to induce or inhibit your protein expression, there are various things that may need to be optimized. You will need to give time for the induction or inhibition to work, and you will need to optimize the amount of inducing component as well. We have an example image here. So on the right, you can see some HeLa cells that have been treated with storosporin to induce apoptosis. And you can see here staining of caspase 3, which is activated during apoptosis. Compared to the control image on the left-hand side, you can see that the control has very little caspase 3. So you really can see the effect of the storosporin and induction on that, of apoptosis on the caspase-3 expression. 